if you need a larger defensive folder, you might want to consider this knife. This is a police G10 model by Spyderco, and I absolutely dig it. Um, now, for years, I was not a big fan of the Spyderco police. That is because, for years, let me grab the Spyderco catalog here. For years, this knife, let me put that right there, was only offered in stainless steel handle. And they ju they're just showing the serrated model here. And as you can see, I have a little X mark next to that. That means I'm, I'm never interested in that, generally speaking. Um, let me show you a picture, actually, on the computer screen at knivesplus.com. By the way, that's a great website for browsing. They have. I wish everybody would do their website as well as knivesplus.com. Um, here we see the older style police model. And it's a good looking knife. It has that long blade, which I'm very... Uh, much turned on to uh, four and one eight inch long. I'll talk about that. Uh, the thing I did not like about the regular Spider Co model is the stainless steel handle. I don't like stainless steel handled knives. They're slick. They offer no traction. They just seem heavy in the hand to me as well. Also, it's a pivot mounted pivot mounted clip. That's the only option you have on the regular Spider Co police model, the Charlie Zero Seven, I guess. And uh, you know, it has this grind on it too. I don't mind the Spyderco grind, like, you know, the, the hollow grinding from about mid-spine down. That's not too bad. And as you've seen, I've reviewed and like a lot of knives that do have that. But if I'm given a choice, I'd much prefer a flat ground blade. Let me lock this back in. Sorry for making you guys dizzy, but it is what it is. Back to the catalog. So, uh, not a big fan of that, and also it was heavy, 5.6 ounces, and I always talk about my 4 ounce weight limitation for knives. I'm willing to go beyond that if I get a lot of knife um, for the weight, and I get more capabilities. And to me, when I'm talking about a defensive folding knife, I'm talking about reach. I like the reach of a longer blade, if indeed that's what I want to do, is go with a folding blade. Maybe my system will only allow, to allow a folding blade knife. I can't really take a fixed blade for concealment purposes, maybe for weight purposes. There's a myriad of reasons why I would go and have gone with a folding bladed knife in my loadout. Enter the Spyderco G10 Police 3, and this was in the 2008 mid-year product supplement, and then Nut and Fancy got real interested in the police model. Because, one, they cured the handle. They slapped some G10, really good G10, as I will show you, on the handle. They lightened it a bit. They say it's 4.9 ounces. In reality, it's 5 ounces, on, on my scale at least, but same weight, pretty much. And the blade's even longer now. <laughs> so that's really cool. 4 and 3 eighths inch in length. So And it gets even better. They changed so I can move the pivot clip wherever I want it, on any of the four corners. So voila, I'm interested in this knife. I should put a little checkbox check box by it because that's how I designate a knife I'm interested in. And I ended up buying, not just getting for review, but buying the outstanding Spyderco G10 police model. And it is everything I hoped it would be. It's just an excellent knife. Now, it's not a super cheap knife, but the police model never has been. It's always going to be around $100. I got this one at my current favorite store, yourcornerstore.com, for $111, which to me represents a pretty darn good value for the quality we're going to be talking about here. Um, buy it now. They had 20 in stock. I'm sure that'll sell out. Um, but now, my, I mentioned your corner store because it's my current favorite. There's lots of great knife places out there, and I don't know what will change in the years to come. Will your corner store be my you know, preferred blade place in the future? I don't know. Um, but as of the making of this video, September 2008, that's the way the situation stood. And just occasionally, very occasionally, I'll mention my places where I got the blades. Now, if that changes, look to the description of this video, and I'll put an amendment to uh, my sources for blades and any other information. My, uh, By the way, my loyalty is to you guys, is to my subscribers. And I am loyal to get you the best knife possible for the best price. That's what I dig and that's my whole mission statement statement for the nut and fancy project so to speak is getting you good blades good gear good guns good tactical nylon good outdoor gear for less and avoiding all the pitfalls that stand in your way in doing so so thanks for tuning in 
Enough blabbering. Let's talk about the G10 Spyderco Police. Man, there's a lot to like about this knife. First off, let's start with that blade. And yes, it's a long blade. Four and three-eighths inch long. That is a pretty good reach for a folding tactical knife. And that's the category I'm going to put this in, is it is indeed a folding tactical knife. It's not an EDC blade in nothing fancy's opinion. It's too big. Um, EDC blades need to be smaller, kind of like, I don't know, just because I have it clipped to my pocket now for test purposes, Spider Co. Salt 1. Okay, that might be a better EDC option. Smaller blades are better. They're more maneuverable, they open packages better, they cut food generally a little better. But this is a defensive blade, maybe offensive blade, depending if you're an officer, maybe a soldier. This would be a great choice to take along with you. Now, it, uh, it does exceed my generally uh, accepted 4 ounce limitation on my knife. But, what do we get in return? Well, in a nutshell, or in a nut and shell, <laughs> we get a big blade. That's a big blade. And you know what? Let's roll in here with some comparisons to show you what I'm talking about. First off, let's talk about our show, the also excellent Benchmade 710 McHenry Williams. And there it is compared to the Spyderco G10 Police. You can see that even still, the Spyderco has a little bit more reach than even the excellent 710. And I love this knife as well. I have a review out on it, and I've said as much. Now, overall, let's take a look at the sizing on that. Just back up this camera a little bit so we can get a better view. I wish I had a wider angle lens, but it does not. So it is larger in overall length. You know what? I used to really not like the longer handles. By the way, this might be a two-parter on this. I really, but I'm digging the longer handles now. I was years ago. I pretty much liked a one-to-one -one handle ratio, and the police model actually comes fairly close. You can see that the blade length versus the handle length is fairly close to one-to-one -one ratio. That being said, that means that that handle is still pretty long. But I'm I'm kind of digging that more these days. Yes, my hands are on the larger size, but if I'm wearing gloves, especially winter gloves, that real estate on the handle is a welcome thing. That's one reason. Another reason I like it is for impact use. If I have to use it in a non-lethal, perhaps lethal, depending on how you employ it, confrontation, that, it, that tip right there, ouch, ouch. You put that in someone's thigh, you put it in a pressure point, or the list goes on, it's not going to be pleasant for that individual. I'll tell you that right now. So, against the 710, it's a bigger blade still. How about against the uh, excellent William Harzy T2 Ranger knife? Bigger. Now, this is a lighter knife, though. This, what, weighs four and a half ounces? I'd have to look at my list, but it's still bigger than that. A little bit more reach. I love both of these knives. Both of them are excellent. I'm just showing by way of comparison the differences. But it can get dwarfed by some other offerings. How about the LFK by Benchmade? Oh yeah, that's a big blade. There's very few blades <laughs> folding style that will match the cutting performance and the reach that you're going to get out of your Benchmade LFK knife. I think anybody who's looking for a a very wicked folding knife for defensive purposes might want to look to this. The only weakness might be the lock. It might be just a little bit on the weak side, the LFK, in my opinion. Only testing, hard testing, would tell that. Hopefully, someone like Knife Test or someone will test it one day. I'm not going to. I don't want to thrash my blade. Handles uh, on the LFK is shorter. You can see we, this is what I'm talking about. I'd rather have the longer handle for a defensive knife. I wouldn't mind this LFK handle being just a little bit longer, albeit it has some Santaprene inserts there, like I mentioned in my review of this knife, that are very excellent. And also Cutlery Lever has a really good review on the LFK too, you might want to look up. But that is dwarfed, uh, the G10 is dwarfed by the LFK. And then you haven't seen this knife, I'll probably do a review on it later, but this is a Dalton Militia 2 knife, an automatic knife. The reason I bring this in, even though it's a completely different style of knife, this is an automatic blade, they both weigh 5 ounces. And so it's interesting to compare like weighted knives against each other. Interesting, huh? 
Anyways, maybe I can get this done in one segment. I better book it. Let's talk about the blade of the G10. Amazing blade. It's full flat ground, VG10 stainless steel. I love it. It's going to shear well, cut well. It comes pretty darn sharp. I did touch it up on some steel to make it razor sharp. Nice Spyderco logo there. The jimping on the thumb ramp, as Spyderco usually gets it, is excellent. Made in Japan, of course. Jimping under the finger choil as well. Excellent. I love that. Nice, big, full, flat ground VG10 stainless blade. I love it. There's not a lot of things I can say bad about the VG10 stainless. I love it. Uh, I've used it a lot in my Centafonte 3s. It holds an edge relatively well, but it takes a very fine edge, and it doesn't take me all day to sharpen it. Nice. The handle, again, is that G10 with a nice... Uh, pattern on it. Uh, it could be better, more aggressive. Reference the Sig Tac knives. I think that's a more purposeful and useful uh, grip pattern on the G10 scales. Uh, if we look inside this knife, it is full stainless steel lined, but as Spyderco usually does, they did their best in lightening it. There's drilled holes in there. See those holes? So nice job again, Spyderco. They're doing the best they can to lighten those stainless steel slabs up. Now, you guys looking for a heavy-duty tactical knife? Again, this might be it because it is stainless steel line. That means it's going to have more lateral resistance to torque. It's going to be a little bit tougher, maybe a lot tougher. Pivot-mounted uh, torque screw so we can adjust the deployment. How is that deployment? Nice and fast. Now, there's a caveat, and I've said this about the Spyderco Endura as well. The caveat is this. It is a longer moment arm, and your deployment hole is at the bottom of that moment arm, and therefore you're going to need a very purposeful deployment method to bring it out. And that's just a matter of physics. In other words, this is your moment arm. This is how we're moving that moment arm at the very base of it. It takes more force to do it. Just a little bit of practice. Fair amount of thumb tension will bring that Spider Cove G10 Police rocking and rolling right on out. The lockup is really tight up and down, side to side. Let me do that again. Up and down, I'm detecting just a very slight amount of wiggle, truth be told, in my G10 police. So that's that. I always keep it real. I'm not going to lie to you. Side to side, it's really nice. But I have really no issues with the lockup on the Spyderco Police G10. Nice. Um, one thing I did not like about on the back spine is it's very slick stainless steel, and they did not jimp it or stipple it in any way and this is what I did to cure it. I took a piece of sandpaper, I'm sorry, the grit tape, um, made the sandpaper variety. I just got it at my hardware store and I cut it very thin so it matches the inside of that lock because this portion actually raises during the deployment of the knife as you can see. Therefore I cannot tape that whole back spine. I just tape the center section. But now, with that on, by the way, I alcoholed it, made sure it had a good um, surface to adhere to. And now I've got a, a run of grip tape that prevents my thumb coming forward on that very long, thankfully long, blade. I mean, I'm sorry, back of the handle. And then, of course, I have that really good jimping. But what that serves as is now I can lock into that back spine along with the thumb ramp as well. You might want to do that to your Police G10. Um, very easy, very cheap modification. Took me all of 10 minutes to do it. It takes some very precise cutting and application on the lock. By the way, this is a lock back knife. And for you guys that do not trust maybe liner locks, uh, you don't have to worry about it with this knife. It rocks. Very nice. Uh, it's got that David Boy D10 in it, which I pretty much think is worthless. It's more hype than useful. Interesting, by the way, you can see the full flat grind here, how they beveled it down. It's just interesting. I love that full flat grinding. Can we take the handles off if we need to? Yeah, they're screwed on, so if you dunk this in salt water, you could definitely do that. It would work just fine. Pocket clip is, again, mountable in all four corners. Very nice indeed. I sure wish that Spyderco and all makers would mount that higher and come up with a design similar to ones I've shown you in a lot of other videos where it rides very low in the pocket. It's just mounted too hot. I'm sorry, too low on the handle. And so this portion here is going to be sticking up. Some guys would say, well, I like that because it allows me to grab the knife quicker. So, well, that might be. I think it's better to bury it deep because my hand goes totally inside my pocket to deploy this knife anyhow. Um, 
Anyways, that's that. Nice clip. It's standard Spyderco clip, blackened, perfectly shaped. How does it feel in hand? It feels nice. Inspires confidence. It's very thin, so some guys may not like that. They might prefer the 710 over it. You know, it has a thicker handle that might be a little bit more comfortable to them. But the jimping is definitely much more purposeful than the 710, no doubt. But it feels good in hand. Uh, the G10 is adequate. I do wish it was a little bit more aggressive. But it seems fast, both in hand and in deploying once you get practiced with it, which obviously I'm still working on. That's a Spider Code G10. It's a 5 ounce, large bladed, apparently very strong tactical folding knife that you might want to look at. If you're willing to go above $100, you will not go wrong. There's a reason why officers in the United States at least and probably around the world have loved this knife for years is because it offers a lot of defensive power and a very nice package and that is a blade that would pierce and slash very well no doubt and that might just save your life one day. Thanks for tuning in. That's Nothing Fancy's review of the excellent Spyderco G10. More coming. Peace out.